What is up, everybody? This is the Elite Athlete Project Podcast. My name is Albert Squires. And I'm Nick Lydon. Woo! And we are ready to go. We got a good one for you today. This is podcast number one, big numero uno. Yes, sir. The five worst exercises athletes should avoid at all costs. Yes, we are talking to you athletes and even some of you gym goers that uh, want to improve the way you Actually, all you gym goers who look at Instagram need to listen up to Every single one of you tune in. (laughs) It is, we are going live. All right. So we got five different uh, categories. Um, we're going to talk about various exercises within these categories, but five categories we're going to hammer down. And those five are big risk, little reward uh, category, doing a whole lot of nothing category. Um, I mean, they're doing a lot, but they're getting nothing done. Uh, crazy stability, balance training, overly sports specific movements. Now, this is a super popular one. I can't wait to get into this. And last but not least, don't be a jackass. <laughs> yeah. That's probably my personal favorite. <laughs> yes. Um, and there is a blog that we did write about this. Well, actually, Nick Lydon did here. Um, so you can go check that out. I definitely recommend it because we put some video clips in there that are just going to enhance everything we do talk about. Uh, but go ahead and talk about, uh, check that out. We'll put a link in there for you. So let's go ahead and get it started, Nick. Tell us about category one, big risk, little reward category. Yeah, so all of these categories happened just over my course of training and helping different uh, you know, athletes, yes, and then also you know, everyday fitness goers and what I've been working with and really what I've been seeing on Instagram. And a lot of this comes from the questions that I get on social media, uh, particularly Instagram and a lot from TikTok. And then also uh, the athletes that I've been training recently, like they'll be coming up and they'll be asking me about like, oh, did you see like this? Should we be doing this in our training? Or, you know, is this, would this work or this not work? And I always have to break it down and explain to them why these things don't necessarily work for what they're trying to do. Clickbait essentially is what we're talking about. Trying to get those views. Things that look cool that, you know, oh, from an innocent person that just wants to get better, I think I'm going to apply this. I'm going to throw this in my training and now it's f***ing me up. Yes, it you know, is. Excuse my French. I'm sorry. Excuse my French. So the big risk, little reward. The first movement we're kind of talking about is the overhead squat. Um, this is actually a movement that as a coach, we utilize this to break down a person's movement patterns, how they move in space. Um, so essentially to find out where their imbalances are, overactive muscles, so where they may be too strong, where they may be too weak, uh, where they may be too flexible or other areas they have not enough flexibility essentially. Um, so this is a very widely used movement. So kind of give us a preface, like why, why is this a bad movement for me to load up and use if I'm an athlete? Because it sucks, Albert. It would <laughs> suck. <laughs> no. um, well, yeah. So the overhead squat, it's a great assessment tool. And I will not take it away from that. Like I, I use it in our assessment tools, especially in our own. Yeah. Our own our, our program. Yeah. You, that's one of the first things you do. Yep, exactly. Overhead squat. However, however, the overhead squat is not a good training tool to have in your tool belt because what it essentially does as, as why we use it for an assessment is it highlights all the areas, like literally your, in, throughout your entire body, it highlights those areas that are either weak, you're not flexible, you're not mobile, and you compromise the movement pattern with, right? So if we go through the overhead squat, what do you need? You need good, basically starting at the wrist, working yourself all the way to the shoulder, your thoracic spine, your hips, your knees, your ankles. There's a lot going on. Making sure you're symmetrical with your squat pattern, you're not going left to right, all these different things that are going on, right? So when you add load, AKA weight, to the movement, because most of the time with the assessment you're using like a PVC pipe or a broom or whatever you got that's like something super light, right? When you add load to that movement, all it does is highlight those areas which you're not efficient at yet. Now, for those of you saying, well, well, why don't you just get better at those movements? Great, honestly great, yes. I I want you to get better at being immobile and having better range of motion motion in your, your ankles and all these different things but it's not something that you program into your workout to attack those different areas. How would it even prove me as an athlete? I mean, just well, theoretically thinking haven't, about we it. We haven't even got there yet. You know? I, I don't know. Unless, I, there is no unless. It, it really <laughs> wouldn't. Another simple movement to think about too is, is like a muscle up or something. It looks cool. 
Um, it's a fun movement once you're able to do it. Yeah. But as an athlete, is this going to help me? Well, hold on. Crossfitters are athletes, Albert. Yes. Yes. And I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that because, yes, Crossfitters are. are legitimate. Some of the best athletes. They are. Arguably. Um, but, again, that's their sport. If I'm a football player, if I'm a baseball player, these movements are not going to benefit me whatsoever. No, exactly. So if – the movement or the exercise is required for your sport, which the only two sport categories I can think of are Olympic weightlifting and CrossFit. They're the only ones that take – their sport is in the gym. <laughs> yes. Besides powerlifting and, yes. you know, that stuff. Every other athlete, whether you're a fencer, badmintoner, football player, or golfer, you are not taking a barbell out with you and using it in your, in your game. Like, no. You're just not. No. So there's better there's better options to improve your skill set, to improve your strength, to so, improve these markers. Yeah, so if you're a coach or you're programming this or you're just an athlete thinking about well like okay, I know the overhead squat like makes me like stabilize my shoulders and blah blah blah. There are safer exercises that you can do that are out there that are going to give you a bigger bang for your buck for, around those specific areas. Yeah. You know, doing for overhead carry, like overhead shoulder stability, like there's bamboo bars you know, that you could be using for overhead walks and yeah. carries and things like that. They're going to help a lot more with shoulder stability, for example. And if you're an athlete developing, the, the key word we're saying right now is safer. The key to being a great athlete, when you think of LeBron James, when you think of Tom Brady, you think of these guys that are Hall of Famers, the best at what they do. It's not the fact of how they do it, but how long they've been able to do it. You know, so that that that's why when you get into these movements, they look great. And yes, they can be argued in theory, but theoretically, you want the simpler movements because that's how you're going to develop your skill set. That's how you're going to build upon the things that you're already doing. Yeah, it's only until you maybe become the elite level athlete where you would you throw like an overhead squat in. Don't let the popularity of a movement that happens in general population and, and even in the CrossFit community, I mean, that's why the overhead squat, I believe, gained a lot of popularity and we see more people doing it is yeah. because of CrossFit because it was something that was dry, that they do in their sport for That helps them stand out, honestly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, you know, they're doing movements and I'm not harping on CrossFit because CrossFit has helped the fitness oh, space. You know, it, it made it, it made it so people are now willing to push themselves and do these movements that do apply a lot. But again, as an athlete, I, I think this is not going to help us. I think what why CrossFit probably gets in the the is get thrones in like the the, the front because they they hammer the functional fitness crap. Oh, this is functional. This is functional. You're moving weight in space and all this crap. You well, know. It also, too, there's a component of CrossFit that you use in every other sport. And when it comes to training, like you're True. using their movements that they do for competition or movements, some of the movements that athletes use to train to get better. It's not like we're going to say, because we compare CrossFit to football and we're with the training, right? And those are like directly correlated or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're never like football to badminton. We'd never be like, this sport is this or, you know, it's right. like completely different. Right. So it, it sometimes is, I think CrossFit gets a little unfairness when it comes to that manner yeah. be, be, just because they're doing things exactly – they're using principles that they're training exactly in the, the football or other things they're doing. And again, we're not here to harp on uh, CrossFit, but now for our next category, I mean, it only segues so well here. Doing a whole lot of nothing. You know, it looks like a great movement, like you're doing this whole thing. Um, the movement here, you guys got to go check it out, though. The 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 Man, the Viper. What, what, the, what is a Viper, Nick? <laughs> it's, it's a rubber tube. <laughs> explain this explain this movement this girl is doing she's she's jumping from one apparatus to another so i'll set the stage yes we have a slant board on one side Oof. on the floor then we have an elevated bosu ball about 12 to, to 18 inches elevated on the next oh yeah now she's jumping back and forth between these two platforms in a skater jump which is a lateral jump so single leg to Plow opposite metric. single leg yeah, yeah. So she's going back and forth between these two, which that's already hard enough as is, but now she's incorporating a wood chop with the Viper from mm -hmm. low on her, I believe her right side going up to her left side. So yeah. there's rotational power, there's lateral power, uh, there's 
transverse pain, there's frontal pain, there's all these things going on, and there's stability components. And, and these coaches are like building a cake. They're like, oh, this all looks cool. Let's all throw it together. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's going to taste magnificent. It's a potluck of shit. Is oh. What you're <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Who nobody, brought this to the party? Nobody wants, nobody wants to eat that. <laughs> nobody wants to eat that. <laughs> but it, I mean, essentially, it's one of those movements. There is so much going on that it's not going to help you develop that skill set. Again, the very, the kiss, the kiss, keep it simple, stupid is one of the best things you can apply to your training because you can actually build on those skill sets. Where here, it is a, the, the lady that they use for this movement, she's an actually really good athlete. Yeah, she is. She's one of the top in her sports actually. But even so, all we're doing for her at this point, if we were to work with her and do this, is put her at risk for injury. We're going to ruin her chance to continue to play her sport for a long time. Well, not only the risk for injury, but you're teaching that central nervous system that new a type of pattern, that uh, that landing pattern, especially in her ankles and knees, uh, with doing this. So you're teaching that athlete now. Okay, because if you go wa- go watch the video, yeah, uh, you got to watch the video. When you see her landing, you see low ankle bone or inside ankle bone down and low. You see that knee cl- uh, collapse in a little bit and her hip outside of that, which just does not create a healthy no. angle for your your you know no. ACLs and, and your knees and your hips and everything. Um, and and that- under, understand this. Sorry to cut you off. It is okay that your body moves that way in sport at times. But if we're training and we're trying to perfect movement and hammer in the perfect movements, you do not want your knees diving in on a regular basis like hers is right now. No, because while she may not get hurt during the during this movement, but if you program in that pattern into your central nervous system and you just keep doing this over and over and over, not only this movement but others where you're you're landing that way, when you go out onto the field and make a cut or do this or that, at a certain time you know, pop goes the weasel. See you, see when you your later. body's tired, yeah. it's going to cheat to this. That's why it's so important that we do things simply. We we focus on those effective movements that are going to translate into those times that we're tired so our body cheats to the proper movement patterns instead of the ones that are going to get us hurt. And there's a whole other layer to this as well. Now we got over the movement patterns, but God. This next one. No, no, no. I'm still on oh, this you still one. On I'm this still one? on this one. I'm still on this one. When you're trying to develop strength or power or muscular coordination or these different... All things athletes need. Yes. It's it's like trying to do 10% of everything and getting absolutely nothing. Yes. The jack of all trades. The jack of all shit. Yeah. You're not getting anything. Like you're not getting better. Like Suda. Doing this, you're not going to get better at cutting. You're not going to get better at running. You're not going to get better at any of the, You're just kind of wasting your time with this stuff. No. The only way to get stronger, more powerful, more explosive, run faster is to give it 110% at those things. So why not choose an exercise or not even choose a different exercise? Just break this up into three different exercises right. and get the absolute most out of each of those because that's how you're going to get your strength levels higher. You're going to develop those muscles to do what you want them to do rather than doing it at 10, 15% and just focusing on not killing yourself with this movement. Right. You know what I mean? Working specific coordination movement, speaking coordination and reactive or responsive. These are the things you want to focus on, not 10 things at once, essentially, like we're doing here. Exactly. Break it down, make it simple, go hard at those simple things. Right. And I mean, again, there's another perfect segue into our next category, which is crazy stability slash balancing training this is a this is something that's getting super popular you like we're seeing these people jump around on 10 different things and we're like oh my god this is amazing yeah so the one i actually chose was a kneeling physio ball overhead press but that's not that it's only two things that are going on right now i chose this one because again what what is the goal you're going for? What's the goal of the exercise? You should always ask that as a coach and as someone who's receiving coaching or doing their own workout. Like well, what? well, let's talk about who needs this specifically because who have we seen do this? Maybe Antonio Brown. LeBron I've seen James. Al- I've seen do it. LeBron James, Alvin Kamara. We're talking about the top athletes in their sports. So they've had years of development mm-hmm. to get to a point where this may benefit 
them. them. Yeah. But the issue is with the one that you're showing is... Well, let's talk about who are those elite athletes you mentioned. That's the top, like, 0.001% of right. the world. Right. So what are... what for? Is this going to benefit me, though, as a high school athlete, then? Not yet. Not yet? Not at all. Not at all. Because why, Nick, though? Why? Because you don't have the foundations built yet. You, you don't. Do, you don't have that foundation set. Even collegiate level athletes, like you, maybe only the top echelon ones that are already slated to go into the NFL draft, or and like you know, maybe them, maybe mm-hmm. they might get a little bit. But right. I'm sure there are other exercises that would benefit them more, much more. Yeah. So it's not. I'm not demonizing stability training. Like no. stability training has great application, especially for like mental cognition and all these different coordination. Aspects. 100 percent that are going to help it, but. I mean, if you go look at the video, that I mean, this is a lady in her, you know, maybe, I'll be nice, mid-30s, you know, 40s, something, right? And it's her trainer making her do a, on her knees. Soccer a st- mom. <laughs> stability ball. Sorry. Stability ball while pressing a dumbbell overhead. And we she, love you, soccer moms. You guys do an amazing job. She's just shaking. You should watch the videos I put at the end of this clip. It's <laughs> even better. It gets more and more crazy. Uh, now, again, what's that goal, right? If the, if the trainer or the, if the person who's doing that exercise, their goal is stability, then I would recommend picking a stability apparatus, whether it be a BOSU ball, a physio ball, whatever it is, and doing body weight movements, moving yourself through a movement pattern and, and, and stabilizing yourself through that movement pattern, like a squat or right. a hinge. Or versus whatever, a load. Versus a, lo- versus a load and another movement on top of that. Right, because then what are we getting into? Are you actually are you trying to strength train? Or are you trying to are you trying to balance train? Right, and this is this is the issue with a lot of these movements that we're talking about is things are overlapping here. And as as an individual as an athlete, we want to focus on specific things. We want to lift with intention. Exactly. This, this is this is one hundred percent. Like if you ever go with any of our programs, the one things we always do is what's the intention here? What are we looking to accomplish here? Right, because like Nick said, yes, the the cake may look great, everything's on it, but we can't have all of it. It's just not how it is. We need to develop specific skill sets and slowly develop these and build upon these developments until we get to those. And then maybe this would apply. But even then, if I was if I had LeBron James in front of me, I'm not loading him up on this. Maybe a slight load just to increase the instability, but it's so minuscule, it's not going to put him at risk for injury. It's just going to be working a certain component of that coordination. I'm sure you've seen the uh, the best one I've seen is someone try to do an overhead squat on a physio ball. It's Ooh, like you are, you're just oh, hitting man. two categories at once, man. brother. That's like big old man. <laughs> no, right. this has a little bit of the... What I, I'll, I'll hold it off. It's the last category. I'll all, right, all, right, all right. So the next category is overly sports specific movements. Now the movement that we chose for this is kind of as our our thing. It looks in theory like looking at it, it looks like oh man, this this may work out. Yeah, it looks it, like okay. I okay. see how it can translate yeah, over right, and all this stuff. Right? Right, yeah. Oh, this guy trained A B, so he must know his shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not, no, oh, dude. I don't want to call the guy out. Yeah, no. you already did though. Overtime. Cats, cats like, out the bag. What's, 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 I can't remember this thing. It's not overtime. We love overtime, actually. No, but, but I, I, um, I, as we've already laughed, I love this category because it really shows from someone who's trained athletes, and, and you, you get to see the trainers that have played the sport, mm-hmm. and the ones who think they know what they're doing and think they can help an athlete but never truly played the game no you know maybe maybe at the pv level i don't right know. but you take this movement so it's called the angled high knee with ring rope single arm press right? it's, it's, this guy's trying to train a stiff arm yeah essentially he's, essentially he's trying to train the stiff arm so he's at a slight angle leaning into a ring he's doing some tippy toe high knees <laughs> looks legit it does i'm doing legit. it and he's got a little three set to 12 we're on it he's got this little viper stab ooh, coming ooh, back ooh, and forth ooh, a quick ooh. jab and he's training he's training the uh he's training that stiff arm right well, if you've played football and you've ever thrown a stiff arm, or if you, you watch Derrick Henry, it was funny. I actually, I actually, <laughs> oh man, I should have done it. The I, hammer. I put, I put this video next to Derrick Henry. I think it was like three, four weeks ago now, where he absolutely crushed someone. Else. Was that the the, the Lions guy? Yeah, I think he like it was. loaded up on Dude, him. He, <laughs> oh, Boom! Yeah. And now that stiff arm is a little, little different. Yeah, <laughs> a little violent, huh? Uh, uh, he threw a jab. A little... that, that's a man stiff arm right yeah. there. But you see it, you take it, you look at this. This is 
this guy is not generating any power. So when you're generating power, you always work your, and especially sports, it's feet through, up through the hips, tr uh, translates through the, the core, and then it's into the arm and you, and you yeah. do whatever it is, right? Your feet are established. You're not on your tippy toes, and for you, one. And you're rarely, I don't know if I've ever thrown a, a stiff arm while I while I was I high knee in or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm running. I want to meet the man that could stiff arm a 200 pound man on his tippy toes. Coming at you. Coming at you full speed. Full speed. Yeah, full speed. It's not happening. It you doesn't are, make sense. You are loading up. You are throwing that haymaker punch, hoping to hit him square in the helmet and collapsing him down to the ground. You're a not squat would do more work for you at this point because at least you're learning how to create ground force that you can actually apply through your hand to put that defender down yeah, I mean, and run it another five to ten if you really wanted to get super sport this is most sports specific that i'd probably ever get for a stiff arm is maybe run with a like a med ball and then throw the med ball as you're running at an angle like that might be the that, that even i would be like come on what are you doing but but this is the thing that are you, all you athletes have to be careful of when you're going through this stuff online is a lot of this shit looks cool oh yeah it looks, it looks cool. super cool but the reality is, is very, very little of it. Like if you go through this, guys, you can go find him, whatever, through the post. Um, but if you go through his stuff, a lot of his crap is absolute crap. And he's and not the only one doing that. He's not the only one. There's a lot of big name guys that are... Hundreds of thousand followers. The hundred thousand followers that are doing all these things that are teaching you bad you know, training techniques and habits. It's just things you do not want to apply. So your body doesn't work like this, how he has it. No, just, your body doesn't be like, okay, I need to train at this very specific angle, this very specific movement, this to my sport exactly this, and get you know throw a band around my arm and make myself you know resistance band you know football throw. Like that's not how your body works. No, what would do you all a lot more benefit is if you took something, if you broke those components up, right? So in this case, uh. uh high knee, right, and then like a, a, a press, a single arm press. You would get way more benefit doing single arm presses on a, on a dumbbell or dumbbell bench or something, right? Stabilizing your core or something like that. Or then doing like a plyometric or something like that, like right. an alternating jump lunge. Like those right. two would give you way more bang for your buck. And then you take those things that you develop, the strength that you get, the power that you get, all that stuff, right? And then you go on the field and if you really want to work a stiff arm, you go get, you know, you do field drills, right? Yes. That's how it translates over. You load up, you have someone with the pad, you're driving your palm into that pad. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's sports specific That's drill. Sports specific. That's, not in the gym. Yeah, it's not it's not. No. Gym you build the, the foundations, the bases and the things. On the field is where it really translates over for you. That brings us to our last category. Don't be a jackass. This is my favorite category. This one irks me the most. Oh my uh, gosh. I mean, this is this is the fitness world right now. This, this is what this, it is. This is the typical fitness world. Yeah, 100%. And and the thing is if you're an athlete, yes, you perform things that the fitness world does. But at the same time, you need to develop skill You're built sets. Different. You're built different. You know, um, we're not we're not curtsy lunging and doing a bicep curl, which is exactly. Or I'm not I'm doing. doing a bicep curl into an overhead press, back down into a reverse lunge, into a burpee, to whatever it is. And if you're an athlete and you're ever going to do a jump, if you throw your hands into the ground as you try to jump up. I might fight you. Yeah, you yeah. are throwing your hands up as you jump. That's just side note right there. Negative <laughs> inches. <laughs> Ert, vert went negative today. Opposing forces works well. Works well. But the curtsy lunge bicep curl. Now <clears throat> I chose this one, and this goes back into the other movements that I've talked about, or we talked about, like the viper lunge cross thing, whatever you want to call it, um, and even into the stability ball overhead press. These all have movements in them or exercise components in them that are limited or one of them is limiting the uh, another one so in right. this case you know you see it now you know sorry ladies but most of you do 5 10 maybe 15 pounds tops with these curtsy lunge bicep curls now for your bicep curls you could probably get a lot you could probably do maybe five to ten more pounds and just target the biceps if you want to and get better development of the arms more strength lose the flab underneath you know the flap or whatever they they have right. you know by doing just more isolated bicep curls now your legs this is essentially like a body weight lunge like if you want to do body weight lunges to burn some calories great but if you're actually using this movement to try to develop strength develop power all that stuff five pounds ain't going to do anything for no. you 
nothing. No. Not at all. So that's why these this category is a, just being a jackass. Now, if your goal is to burn some extra calories, fine. You maybe burn five. You probably wouldn't burn any more because you could probably burn more calories by yeah. doing a better. You ain't gonna truck stick nobody doing a fucking curtsy lunge. You, you know, <laughs> excuse my French again, but it's just not gonna happen, fellas. It's just not gonna happen. I mean, and I, I like this to cap off everything because again, I mean, essentially everything we're getting at right now is an athlete. Again, you want to focus, you want to lift with intention. What is the intention here? What what am I trying to accomplish? That's one thing you need to ask yourself constantly whenever you're viewing these things. What is this specific thing that we're trying to improve by doing this? If you cannot come with a logical answer yourself and you're not even a coach, I mean, really really now, what what are we doing here at this point? Yeah. And you know, this is like this. This falls in line with those like three to four co- movement complexes. Yeah, too, the complexes. Oh, I'm gonna do. Uh, it's conditioning. It's not. It's not improving your skill set as an athlete. It's conditioning. It's conditioning with a high risk of injury is basically what it is. Yes. You know, as a young athlete, the one thing that you need to focus on for one is getting stronger, is moving better. You know, not trying to throw five to six things into one movement itself. Keep it simple. Focus on the things that are going to produce results, not put you at risk for injury. Exactly. Be smart. Train hard. Train hard. Be safe, too. Yes. Do you have anything left to say today? No. Overall, um, just, you know, or if you want to, you know, hear more from us or learn more from from us, uh, you can follow us on our Instagram account, which is uh, Athlete Academy with an underscore on it or you can follow our personal co- accounts which is mine is just nick underscore Leiden. yeah my co- coach squires on instagram albert squires on facebook if you want to find me there yeah and if you want to make sure that you can uh see this and see all the videos well, we're going to be putting this up on the youtube on our athlete academy channel and then uh you can find the blog that we've been referencing all of these for and you can go see those videos there as well um and that's at athleteacademy.us forward slash five worst exercises and we'll put the link in the show notes as well yeah thank you guys we this is a lead athlete project podcast and we're going to be coming out with more content next week's going to be dorsey flexion so this applies to speed mechanics and improving your running mechanics everything else there so if you want to get faster you're going to want to listen in next week yeah this is a very specific thing that we're talking about that can really take your speed and agility training to that next level yeah All right, guys, have a great week, and we'll catch you later. All right, peace.